السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته to carry on with the uh, special embryology lecture I'm gonna cover uh, in this presentation the development of the external genitalia and the urethra I'm Dr. Dalia Saleh, professor and head of anatomy department at Mansoor University The objectives of my presentation will be uh, we will talk a little bit about the development of the urogenital sinus and its division and its derivative. Then we will discuss uh, the development of the external genitalia in both in different stage and different stage. And then we will discuss the development of the urethra, both in male and female, and of course its anomalies. In this diagram, you can see uh, the entrance of the mesonephric duct into the urogenital sinus. It will divide it into an uh, upper part. It's called the vasico urethral part. And a lower part, this is the definitive urogenital part. Um, and the definitive urogenital sinus is divided uh, into also two parts, the pelvic part and the phallic part. For the external genitalia, uh, first let's start with sex determination. How sex is determined in the embryo? Um, in the beginning, we have the genetic sex. This, of course, occurs at the time of fertilization. If a uh, sperm carries Y chromosome, fertilize the egg, then um, the embryo or the zygote that will result is XY, means that he, he will be a male. If the sperm carries the X chromosome and fertilizes the ova, then the zygote will be XX, means that she will be a female. Uh, so genetic sex determined first. Then, according to the absence or presence of the Y chromosome, the gonadal sex is determined. Meaning that if uh, this embryo carries the Y chromosome, then uh, the gonad will uh, develop into testicles and if there is no a Y chromosome then the default of development of the gonad will be ovaries. After the gonadal sex later on the phenotypic sex or the appearance the outer appearance either in the external genitalia or internal genitalia determined later on and this is because of the hormone secreted from this developing gonad. Of course uh, if uh, the development gonad is testis, then uh, the hormone will be testosterone. It will affect both the internal uh, structures uh, of uh, the male to, to develop into male duct system. Also, it will affect the external uh, genitalia to develop into male side. And if the developed gonad is already over, then there is no testosterone. Then the default of both the internal genitalia and the external genitalia will be towards the female side. In the indifferent stage in the formation of the external genitalia, the cloacal membrane is sur will be surrounded by a fold of mesoderm. It's called the cloacal fold. These two folds will meet anteriorly and form the genital tubercle. Uh, also, the urorectal septum, while it divides the cloaca into dorsal, anorectal part and ventral urogenital part, it will also divide the cloacal membrane into anal membrane and urogenital membrane. It will also divide the cloacal fold into two folds, urethral fold and anal fold. A genital swelling is formed lateral to the urethral fold. So this is what we got in the um, in different stage. You have um, the cloacal membrane divided into two membranes, urogenital and anal. We have the cloacal fold divided into two folds, urethral fold and anal folds. And the two urethral folds meet um, anteriorly to form the genital tubercle. And on each side of the urethral fold, we have the two genital swellings. For the different stage, we have both in male and female. This is the genital tubercle. These are the two urethral folds. This is the inner fold. 
and these are the genital swellings. This is in female. The same uh, looks here in male. Genital tubercle, urethral folds, anal fold, and genital swellings. So what happens for the genital tubercle? It will grow and form uh, the penis, while in the female it will remain small and form the clitoris. For the two urethral folds, in male they will fuse and form the male urethra or penile urethra. And you can see the wave here that represents the fusion of the urethral folds together. While in female, they do not fuse and they remain separated and form the lapia minora, inside which you can see the opening of the urethra in female. But here is lies the opening or in, of the male urethra here, and also this is the opening of the vagina. For the genital swellings, they fuse uh, in male to form the scrotum, while in female they remain separated and form the lapia majora. Now, what about the development of the urethra? Let's revise the anatomy of the urethra first. The urethra uh, in the male is formed of the prostatic part, which passes inside the prostate, and the membranous urethra, which passes in the perineal uh, pouches, and then the penile urethra, which passes inside the penis. For the prostatic urethra, its upper part develops like that of the urinary bladder. So its anterior wall is derived from the basic urethral part of the urogenital sinus, while its posterior wall, same like the trigone of the urinary bladder, comes from the mesonephric ducts. While its lower part originates or develops from the pelvic part of the urogenital sinus. Then the membranous urethra develops from the pelvic part of the definitive urogenital sinus, while the penile urethra mainly develops from the phallic part of the definitive urogenital sinus. What happens in the penile urethra during development is that the urethral groove is bounded by the two urethral folds, like I have mentioned before. If we take a cross section in it like this, so this would be the urethral groove, and these uh, are the, the two urethral folds. The endoderm of the groove will proliferate and form what's called the urethral plate. And then the two urethral folds will approximate to each other and fuse, forming the penile urethra. Look at the above diagram here. The two urethral folds approach and fuse together and form um, the benign urethra. Then, uh, the distal end of the penile urethra, or the part that uh, lies within the clan's penis, is actually exodermal in origin. So, there is a solid cord of cells arise uh, at the tip of the clan's penis which later on will be canalized and the lumen of the urethra will be maintained. And so if we summarize the urethra formation, uh, the epithelial lining of the urethra is mainly endodermal in origin except in two regions. Uh, first, uh, the posterior wall of the prostatic urethra here will develop like that of the tribune of the urinary bladder from the caudal ends of the mesonephric ducts. And remember that mesonephric duct arise from mesoderm. The second place is at the very tip of the uh, glans penis because it arises from the um, ectodermal cells at the tip of the glans penis. Uh, so it is ectodermal in origin. So most of the uh, uh, urethra, epithelial lining of the urethra is endodermal in origin except at two sides. Uh, then the smooth muscle surrounding the uh, epithelial lining is uh, mesoderm melanoid. 
at the end of the third month of uh, development, epithelium of the prostatic urethra will outgrow into the mesenchyme of the surrounding mesoderm to form the prostate. If we talk a little bit about the anomalies of the urethra, we will find an anomaly it's called epispedius. So in order to understand this picture, this is the scrotum, this is the uh, penis, and this is the dorsal uh, surface of the penis. And the opening of the urethra, instead of being at its a normal side at the tip of the glans penis, it lies here over the dorsum of the penis. So we call this anomaly epispadius. So in this anomaly, the urethra opens on the dorsal surface of the penis. Uh, it's frequently associated with other anomalies uh, like extrophy of the bladder. Uh, then we have another type of anomaly which is called hypospedius. Actually, it is quite the opposite of epispedius. Here, the urethra opens on the ventral surface of the penis. Uh, and the common cause is due to failure canalization uh, of the glandular part or failure of fusion of the urethral folds. And the site of hypospedius, either glandular near the glans penis or penile at any site at the shaft of the penis or even scrotal. Uh, this is the end of my presentation and thank you for listening.